Today we're going to witness retrofitting a SunGrow battery and hybrid inverter to an existing 6.6 kilowatt system on this unit, which is a unit that I own. Now to retrofit this battery, what I've decided to do is replace the trusty six year old Fronius five kilowatt solar inverter with a SunGrow hybrid inverter. So that means the SunGrow inverter, one inverter will handle the solar and the battery. Now the, one of the cool things about SunGrow's is you can choose. I could have used AC coupling and we could have put the SunGrow next to the Fronius. The SunGrow could have handled the battery. The Fronius could have carried on handling the solar, but I decided not to. Why did I do that? Because I wanted a simple system and I wanted the SunGrow monitoring to just monitor the solar and the battery. Keep it simple. I know it's gonna trigger a lot of Fronius fans, but we're replacing the premium Fronius solar inverter with a SunGrow hybrid inverter. And it's gonna go over there on the wall. We're gonna put the battery beneath. There's gonna be 12.8 kilowatt hours of battery storage. That's four battery modules on the SunGrow. And the finished result, We'll have backup on the lights and I'll choose some circuits to back up. We won't back up the whole house because the SunGrow isn't really designed for that. It's more designed for partial backup. So we'll have a battery, we'll have a hybrid inverter, we'll have solar analytics monitoring and SunGrow monitoring, and hopefully we'll have lower bills. So why am I getting a battery? Well, there's two main reasons. The first reason is I want lower electricity bills. Now, since I got this solar system, I've been getting a 22 cent feed-in tariff from AGL. Thank you very much, AGL. And I've literally never had an electricity bill in this unit since I got solar. But as of in two days time, AGL is dropping that 22 cent feed-in tariff and they're dropping me down to, I think, five cents. Now, I'm not stupid. I'm gonna ring them up and I'm gonna negotiate and I'm gonna get that much higher than five cents, but it's still going to be a lot lower than 22 cents. So the battery will mean that I won't be using electricity overnight and that will help keep the bill right down because I hate paying electricity bills. The other reason I'm getting in particular a SunGrow battery is installers that I talk to are raving about the SunGrow battery and inverters. They're at the budget end of the spectrum, but they're reliable, they're easy to commission, and the monitoring apparently works really, really well. And apparently they're really flexible. You've got lots of control over the battery. If you've got different tariffs, if you want to charge from the grid, charge from the sun. So I'm really excited to play with all that stuff. And the only way at Solar Quotes we get to test and review stuff is if we buy it ourselves because we refuse to take freebies off the manufacturers. Because as soon as you get a freebie from a manufacturer, they think they can influence your editorial and we're not cool with that. So. I'll have my own SunGrow battery that I've paid for and I'll be able to see how it works over the years and review it for you guys. So I'll just explain the layout of this property. This is the garage, obviously. The unit is up here. This switchboard here, that's actually a subboard, and then the inverters next to it. So originally when we got the solar system installed, we had the Fronius inverter in the laundry upstairs where we'll go in a minute. But the problem with the early Fronius ones is they're so bloody noisy. So last year, we moved it downstairs, we put a subboard downstairs, and while we were at it, we put in the Zappi EV charger because everyone's moving to EV. So let's go upstairs and I'll show you the actual switchboard. So this teeny tiny switchboard is the unit switchboard. You can see we've got solar analytics hardware in here for the old system. We're moving from a hardware solar analytics to a software solar analytics. And one of the great things about SunGrow, solar analytics software can talk directly to the SunGrow hardware and ask it what the data values are. And then why I love Solar Analytics is it's the only monitoring system I know of that will send you a message if your system is underperforming. Most analytics systems will just say your system's either completely knackered, so it's operating at zero, or it's working. Whereas this one will say, ah, oh, your system's working at 75%, you should probably have a look at it. So we'll get rid of the Solar Analytics hardware, we'll get rid of the breaker, then we'll have enough space for the SunGrow smart meter. That's the SunGrow device that does the metering and sends all the data to the cloud. So in terms of the installation, the boys are going to run a six mil cable, 32 amp cable from here down the cable tray to the subboard, and that's gonna be used for the backup circuit. So in Australia, when people are retrofitting a battery to an existing solar system, a common choice is the Tesla Powerwall. That's 13 and a half kilowatt hours of usable storage and it's really easy to retrofit because it's AC coupled. So why am I getting a SunGrow? Well, the main reason is 
it's two to three thousand dollars cheaper for a similar amount of storage. I'm getting 12.8 kilowatt hours here and I'm saving myself about two and a half grand over getting a power wall. So let's talk phases. This unit is on a single phase supply so the backup is fairly straightforward. You're just backing up a single phase. If I had three phase, you'd have a choice. You could back up three phases and one of the great things about SunGrow is they're one of the few hybrid inverters out there that can do proper three phase backup or you could back up one of the three phases and just have the backup circuits on that phase. Now in terms of backup, I'm not going for whole house backup because this SunGrow unit is limited to 25 amps and that's quite limited. For example, if I plug the EV into the car charger, it's gonna start pulling 32 amps immediately and that would just pop the breaker. So we just back up essential circuits. So if the grid goes out, you'll still have lights, you'll still have your fridge and you'll still have a few GPOs that you can plug into and you know, if you wanna watch a TV or charge your phones, and I'm happy with that. So the hybrid inverter is on the wall, looking lovely. And now Josh is just leveling up the base plate for the batteries. Now these are really nice design. They're stackable batteries. They weigh about 30 kilograms per module. Each module is 3.2 kilowatt hours. And one of the nice things about that is you haven't got a you know, 150 kilogram battery that you've got to lug and put on the wall or put on the floor. One person can carry a battery module and as you'll see, just drop it onto the base plate. So once they've dropped the modules on, we've got four modules, four times 3.2 is 12.8 kilowatt hours. So we've got one, two, three, four battery modules all stacked up, super quick. Next thing to do is to fix a wall bracket to the top battery to stop 120 kilograms of battery toppling over because that would be a disaster. So in terms of wiring up the battery to the hybrid inverter, because it's DC coupled, you've simply got DC power, earth, and comms, so the hybrid inverter can talk to the battery management system. So that's all the work done in the garage, apart from putting the covers on, so let's just go through what we've done. We've got four battery modules installed. We've wired that up with power and data to the hybrid inverter. In the hybrid inverter, we've got the two strings east and west of solar. We've got the battery power connection. We've got a data connection to the battery BMS and we've got a data connection to the SunGrow smart meter that's going upstairs in the unit. We've got the Wi-Fi dongle. We've got the backup circuit and we've got the grid connection. Then in this subboard down here, we've added a 20 amp breaker and that's for the backup circuit. So what's left to do downstairs? Obviously, we've got to put the covers on. We've also got to run a cable from the garage upstairs to the unit, and that's for the backup circuit. So this is Ben from DQ Electrical that are doing the install today. So if I decide I haven't got enough storage and I want to add a few more kilowatt hours, yep. is it easy or is it hard? What do I need to do? It's very easy. We just need to take off this top, top hat unit here, and uh, yeah, you simply stack on another, another unit. Wow, they come in cool. stacks of 3.2 kilowatts. Right. But you still need a Sparky to do it. You do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so SunGrow, they, they've won best budget inverter, best budget battery. So they're pretty good value, but they're not too cheap, are they? Because you can get some really cheap batteries. Yeah, no, they're not as cheap as your, uh, your entry level stuff. What would, um, what would you say to someone that thinks SunGrow's too expensive and they want to go even cheaper? Uh, you get for what you pay for. Um, you know, the service and the backup as well needs to be taken into consideration. Yeah. Um, and the tech support of the, of the system and the brand. So Ben, if someone's tossing up between a Tesla Powerwall 2 and a SunGrow battery solution, both yep. good batteries, Very good. what would you say to them? The Tesla Powerwall is a fantastic product, yep. um, but in terms of value for money, you can achieve this SunGrow system with your PV on the roof for the same price as a Tesla Powerwall supplied and installed. That's pretty compelling. Yeah. So it's about two o'clock in the afternoon. The boys have been going at it flat out pretty much with a bit for lunch since eight o'clock in the morning. So we're six hours into the install. Downstairs is completely done. They've run the cable. So that's the six mil cable for the backup circuits from the garage, up the cable tray into the roof cavity and down into the main switchboard. Just running that cable took about two hours. That's always a big part of most battery installations. And they've also pulled out the solar analytics meter and swapped that with a SunGrow meter. Now, when you've got solar only, you don't really need a consumption monitor for everything to work. It's optional, so you can see what the power flows in your house. But if you have a battery, 
you absolutely need a consumption meter so the battery inverter can see how much power you're using and make sure it just dispatches the right amount of energy from the battery to satisfy that load so you're not drawing anything from the grid where at all possible. So we've got that in there and the next step is to commission everything we need to get the battery talking to the inverter we need to set up all the monitoring and we need to check everything's hunky-dory and that will probably fingers crossed take half an hour. So everything's done, the battery's commissioned, it only took 20 minutes, which the boys reassure me is a world record. <laughs> so that's actually really quick to commission a battery system. And now we're just left with three commissioning checks. One, we're gonna check that when there's more solar than the unit's using, that the battery's actually charging. And if we look now, we got 2.4 kilowatts of solar and the battery's charging with the remainder, which is just over two kilowatts, so that's working well. Next job is to go upstairs, we'll do a backup test, so we'll kill the main switch, make sure the lights stay on, and then we'll also put an appliance on so we're using more electricity than the solar's generating and check that the battery's just topping up the unit so we're not drawing anything from the grid. Let's go. Now for the second test, we want to test the battery the other way around. We want to put some loads on so that unit is drawing more electricity than the solar's generating and check that the battery makes up the difference so we're not drawing anything from the grid. So kettle on, that's about two kilowatts. Toaster on, that's about another two kilowatts. And yep, as you can see, we're pulling more load than the solar can supply, and the battery is topping up from the grid, so we're using zero watts from the grid. Perfect. Now for the final test, which is the most exciting, will the backup still power the essential circuits when we kill the grid? So I'm about to hit the main isolator switch, and that physically disconnects the unit from the grid, hopefully the lights will stay on. I don't know if they'll flicker or not. Let's go. There we go, there was a tiny, tiny little flicker, but we're literally physically disconnected from the grid. The lights are running, the fridge is running, and a few GPOs are running, the internet's running. All good. So there you go, six and a half hours from go to woe. We've got a SunGrow 12.8 kilowatt hour battery. We've got a SunGrow hybrid inverter. We've got backup, we've got grid top up, and I can look forward to drawing very little grid electricity through the night, on most nights. And if there's a power cut, I'll have a fridge, I'll have internet, I'll have TV. What more do you need? Anyone want to buy a second-hand Fronius inverter? Six years old, one careful owner, only a few scratches. <laughs>